You are watching episode 6 of the Cape Winelands vlog. My name is Dean Parman. This is TravelVidStarTV. I don't want to be your sweet lemonade I don't want to quench your thirst when you got the cream Welcome to episode 6 of the Cape Winelands Meander vlog. This is Seit Achter Paal. If you've missed the first five episodes and you don't know what this is all about, then I suggest you uh, go up to the card over here now and jump all the way back to the beginning. Or watch this video if you see what you like, then um, you might want to consider seeing the full series. Today's video we are focusing on Seit Achter Paal or the Seit Achter Paal route which is everything south side of the Paal Mountain. So Paal is actually just on the other side of the mountain here. We are in what is called Seit Achter Paal which means the uh, south behind Paal and there's this little road along here it's got about five or six farms that are right next to each other. Um, so after Paul, um, you, you get Fairview, mm -hmm. you get Spice Street and then you get Lone Street. And they make up the Seit Achter Paul route. Yeah. So, so that's the so extent of it. So you can literally here. stay here and explore all of this. Yeah. And this. I usually say for people that come here that um, the Seit Achter Paul route is a destination. On its own. It is, it really it is. is. Yeah. Right at the front, there is a venue called Diamant Estate. It's a wedding and events venue. Uh, we popped in this morning to go check out what the venue looks like. Good morning. It's Diamant Estate. Now we're not going to spend a lot of time here. Um, it's an event venue. Uh, I don't have an event other than being here. Uh, so I sort of check it out a little bit, um, show you what's available in case you plan on getting married. To give you some perspective of where Diamant State is located in reference to Paul, I'm going to quickly chuck the drone up and you'll get a good landmark. That little thing that you may have seen there sticking up, that's the Tal Monument, remember episode 2? <laughs> So, to give you some perspective, we're just on the other side of Paal Mountain, um, on the south side of the mountain, hence the word Seit Achter Paal. And Diamant Estate is the sort of number one stop on the road, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm Shane and we're at Diamant Estate. So the manor house was built in 1821. It's been renovated a few times since then. Um, most recently with our four um, luxurious suites. Um, this is usually where the bride and groom will stay and the bride will get ready on the wedding day. Tell me just a little bit more about the entire estate, uh, what, what's available here. So you're an events yep. venue. Yes, yeah, so we predominantly do weddings, that's mm -hmm. what we do really well here, um, but we are a guest house as well. So we've got the manor house and then the pioneer house as okay. well, which has eight additional bedrooms, mm -hmm. um, but we also do conferencing. What would you say are the, the things that make this estate better than anything else? I think... Um, we're quite a small kind of family unit mm -hmm. which is really nice because we do get to know our couples um, very well at the end of a wedding weekend you know if we're hugging everyone and yep. it feels like we were part of their their day which is really nice you do get to know everyone so cool. i think that's yeah awesome. sets us apart. and it's beautiful yeah. it's stunning it's i mean yeah you can't i know it's getting old hearing this it's stunning everywhere <laughs> we go but <laughs> It it's really a is. It's part of the world. It's a beautiful yeah. part of the world. We're very lucky. Best season for weddings here? Uh, I would say around March. Okay. Um, March, our, February, March, our rose garden is in full bloom. Okay. And it's absolutely incredible. But you meant it all year round, yeah. I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. Winter weddings? Love winter weddings. Um, Any time of the year. Roaring fires. Ah. Yeah, we make it nice and cozy. 
So really any time of year, but yeah, the Rose Garden is quite special. Where are we going now? This is the main venue. Okay. Um, so this is one of our courtyards. Oh, it's beautiful. Nice place for guests to come and chill. We've got this huge big fire pit that's, I mean, you can imagine. You see, yeah. it's so dark, <laughs> it's so bright. Look at that thing. And how many people? Um, we can do maximum for? 150 people. Okay, for it's a, a big wedding. Yeah. yeah, it's a big wedding. And the field down there, I see there's like a bar, outside bar. Yes, so there's that's that. for pre drinks. Um, but so we so you shuffle around the yeah. estate as it goes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice to move your guests around so that they're seeing something different. For sure. um, otherwise, they tend to get bored. Yeah. So, yeah. Don't know how we get bored in, I know. These, <laughs> in these places, but it happens. It does. <laughs> And I can't forget to mention they have a chapel on their estate, so you can literally come through the gates, park off and be here from pre-wedding till after wedding. You can even do your honeymoon here. You know what? It's a one-stop shop. It is a 17th century wine cellar. Oh wow! So it's the oldest building on the property. I quite like that. So the the wine cellar is uh, the oldest building is now the chapel. One of the bedrooms there was the old kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very innovative. Done a really good job at keeping the history of the property. Obviously making it super special. Right next door to Diamant we have Fairview. It is the most beautiful morning. It was a little bit overcast this morning with a little bit of drizzle but the sun's just popped out. And uh, we are going to Fairview. Hi, my name is Perfect. We are here in February. You're not going to find a tasting menu in Cape Town anywhere like this. So you can have six cheeses for 20 Rand. It's like a dollar, pretty much. Um, or you can go with uh, the standard tasting, which is six wines paired with cheeses for 40 Rand. I mean, come on, it's like nothing, it's a giveaway. Somebody from Fairview is just going to uh, talk me through what makes them special. I know why they're special, I've been here before. But that's not the point. You need to know, and I want to hear it from them. Yeah, so please introduce yourself. Hi everyone, so uh, welcome to Fairview, my name is Neil. Um, yeah, and for us, we are a wine and cheese producer here in the heart of Paul. And um, our the focus, best. the best of course. Um, and our focus over the years has always just been to add, add um, value to quality artisanal agricultural products. So we produce our own wines, we make our artisanal handcrafted cheeses, we bake our own breads, we even use, we grow our own wheat to make flour for our bread, uh, we produce our own extra virgin olive oil. So anything that is a agricultural okay. product, anything that's, um, that can be grown here on the farm, we aim to be 100% self-sufficient. Fairview's actually got a very wide variety of wines. One that stands out for me is actually a dessert wine. Um, not really much for sweet wines, but that one in particular, mwah, I'm gonna get the name for you in just a second. Besides the uh, wide variety of wine, there's a wide variety of cheese too. If you are visiting Cape Town and you can't make it all the way out to Pile, then please do yourself a favor and go to a supermarket and get yourself some Pile made camembert. This, this is one of the products that Neil was talking about, this and the brie, um, that you can actually find all over all over South Africa really. And then there are some other products that we kind of we keep for ourselves and mm -hmm. we want to give people reasons to come to the farm. So that's, that's, that's the point I was trying to get to. <laughs> so, so what am I going to expect here? What 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 can I do okay. as I enter the store here? So yeah, so here we've got a we've got a few different kind of wine and cheese tasting options. So whether you are out for a fun day with your friends and your family, um, wanting just to you know to, to, to do a more informal wine and cheese tasting, mm -hmm. we've got that. So we pride ourselves on being quite down to earth and relaxed. You know, yeah. so we we take our products seriously, but again, so we you know the, 
our tastings are informative, but again, also not kind of um, daunting or kind of, you know, awesome. not so relaxed. And, and yeah, so. The only uh, question I have left is is it too early for a wine tasting? Never. When the sun is up, it's time to drink wine. <laughs> While the sun's up, I'm in. <laughs> so, cool, thanks, Neil. If I've learned anything from being in power for the last few days, it is that it is never too early for wine or cheese. I'm Julie Beth and I'm a brand ambassador at Fairview. Okay. Um, I work in our master tasting. Yep. And we headed down to our standard tasting where we do a, a slightly more informal tasting with six of our um, wines. I'm Tammy. Hi Tammy, I'm Dean. Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Right, so normally we give like, we do like the six wines with the six cheeses. Yeah. So um, we give you like two white wines, four red wines. First one, we'll start off with our MCC Brut. Oh, bubbles in the morning. Bubbles in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> the MCC Brut is named after our owner, Charles Beck. This is also the first time that we've named a wine after him. With um, MCC, does, is it, do you also follow the same process? Is it also on the nose? or? You can do that, yeah. We don't use you it don't normally, swirly. Yeah, no, that's what I'm asking. Okay. Yeah, so you no can just swirling. smell it. You can smell it, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll knock all the bubbles out if you swirl it too much. But. <laughs> right, so you start in your left side with the cheese. There's okay. a feta. The feta is made from cow's milk. Salty and the bubbles go well Very together. Well. <laughs> it Very really well. works. Right. Next is our three poppet for tape. Light, fresh, perfect for a good summer's day. It's a little colder today, but uh, <laughs> I'm not complaining, so <laughs> cheers. Uh, what cheese would this go with? Our creamy goat cheese. Creamy goat cheese. On the farm, do you have more red or more white or a good mix of both? I think a good mix of both. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and how many types of wines? <laughs> do you have a rough idea? I won't hold you to it. Yeah, we got like 45 different wines. Okay. Yeah, so more or less, <laughs> I sure. Think, yeah. And I have to ask another question. The, there's a sweet wine. I think it's at the bottom. I don't know if what is that called? Is it the the, the, the white one? No, the red one. There's a sweet red. Is it called sweet red? Sweet red. Yeah. <sighs> Should have known that. Sweet red is like a fortified, so like fortified. It is so good. <laughs> yeah. My name is Zanele. And where are we? Uh, we are at Fevy Wine Farm. It's a cheese site. We call it Mexico, where you do cheese tasting. We have six different cheeses to try out today. Our first cheese, it is a traditional brie. It's more like a camembert, okay. but more mushroomy than a camembert. But this one is more flavorful than a camembert, and we pair it with a ripe fig jam. At the, the cheese. The cheese and the jam. And the jam. Brie and fig jam. Mmm. <laughs> I was so predictable. <laughs> My favorite cheese. Yeah. I think it tasted it on the other side. Garlic and herbs. Yeah. Then with the paprika, but the garlic and herbs takes the award for me. Yes, that is a cake slice. Um, okay. It's a cream cheese with, with salmon and it's more lemonish. You can taste the lemon in it. So it's, she says it's, it's called a cake slice. It's got layers. It's hard to see there, but like a pink layer, white layer, and it's got a. Mmm. Cheese cake. It's got a like a, a cheesecake texture to it. Mmm, very good. I seriously need to leave now. I'm gonna eat all their samples. I'm gonna pack some cheese in because I think tonight I'm staying at a self catering cottage, and uh, what better way to. Uh, end of today much 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 later with a platter of cheese and wine. Definitely can't leave this place until I've got a shot of an actual goat. That's Mr. King up there. Although this dude looks a whole lot bigger. Hi mister. Yes? What do you have to say for yourself? Hmm? You got curly hair like me. Yeah, let's give that a scratch. Let's give that a scratch. 
although we go to a place like this for the wine and for the cheese you can't underestimate the value of the grounds just parking here and the walk through you know it's, it's through the goat pens and the vineyards and that it it's it's one of the things that makes this magical it's one of the reasons you come here um, is just to be here so even for those that aren't into wine are lactose intolerant <laughs> doesn't matter just being here in itself is is a is actually quite a special thing the thing that I absolutely love about today is that everything that I'm going to is really 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 close uh, Fairview and the Avamont estate is just over there spice route is over there those buildings at the top there uh, Landskroen truck passing Landskroen is over here and then the alpaca loom is just over there so they're all four neighboring estates neighboring farms along the mountain here um, tonight I'm staying at Landskroen which is the the property that I'm standing on right now so I'm gonna go check in now already go see what they have to offer and then I'm gonna take a walk over to um, spice route a little bit later to do to do some other stuff so today I can literally park off and and walk from place to place so uh, you're not gonna stop me from drinking wine today <laughs> no uber required You know when you just walk onto a property and you know you're in the right place? It's got a magic feeling to it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the cottage of Lanskron, my humble abode for the next maybe two days. So we're on a historic wine farm. Behind me is one of the cottages. It's a self-catering cottage and I'd like to quickly show you around. So first of all, nice veranda overlooking the Cape Winelands. Perfect place to, uh, after a day of wine tasting, to come park off with the goods that you've bought and just enjoy the sunset. Apparently, when it sort of reaches five o'clock, Everybody goes home, the farm goes quiet, it's a beautiful place to be. Um, come, come check it out. So over here is the master, ah, that's, lean in. that's the master bedroom. And this side is your lounge and kitchen area. Let's go inside. First of all, it's super spacious. It's got everything you need to stay for a long time. So it's got a tumble dryer, a washing machine. Um, you know, if you, if you want to stay for longer periods of time, you can do that. It's got an inside braai area. So you can literally cook on a fire inside, old school style, like they did back in the day. It can sleep four people. So there's a bed in the lounge area with a pull out bed underneath for the kids. And then in the master bedroom, there's a beautiful uh, double bed with a walk-in closet, I might add. Two bathrooms, perfect for the family. If you want to stay on the winelands, this is super central. You can walk to Spice Street. That's what most of our um, people that stay in Ovenock Cottage mm. do, yeah. It's they, fantastic. They leave the choir and then they do like a vineyard walk to, yeah. to Spice Street or go further to Fairview. Fairview, yeah. I've come from Fairview already. But yes, yeah. I usually, we've, I usually say that you get the, the cheese from Fairview, the chocolates from um, Spice Street, yeah. and then the port and the view here yeah, at Lunch Grid. <laughs> well, I'm ending my day here, so. Yes, perfect. yeah. And um, if it's going to be much clearer you're gonna have a nice sunset yeah excellent I'm moving in so we're staying here we've seen what it looks like now we got to see what it tastes like I will get Danny <laughs> 
<laughs> this wine tasting is going to be a little bit different because Bavina is going to come join me right here. And we're going to keep it nice and relaxed. <laughs> come and sit and relax. You can't join me in tasting though, can you? Unfortunately oh, not. <laughs> right, no, um, what I wanted to ask before we get to all of this, yes. tell me just a little bit about the estate and the yes. name and yeah. Okay. Um, Lazarin is a family owned farm. It's um, owned by um, two, the families of two brothers, um, Paul and Hugo de Villiers. Paul is our cellar master at the moment and he's the fifth generation of Pauls that's making wine on the Oh farm. wow, okay. And his brother's name is Hugo, so, and he's the viticulturist. So okay. Very family oriented. Cool. <laughs> So it's all about family, mm -hmm. all about tradition and so forth. And at our tasting room, um, we've got the food and wine pairing that we're going to do. <laughs> I love I love those. <laughs> this and looks great. Yeah, you know, we've got um, picnics. We've got available. Okay. We've got standard wine tastings available and so forth. So you usually start with um, from your left, yeah, with the Chenin, and then you end off with the Blanc de Noir, the Turkish tea. Okay, so yes. it's literally the board and the, the wine match as you yes. go. <laughs> yes, yeah. I know you can buy these um, brands in stores in the city, but it just doesn't compare to coming to sit on the, on the estate, on the farm, um, seeing where it's actually made, meeting the people that are involved in um, the production. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Danny Brown. Hi Danny. I'm the assistant winemaker here at okay, cool. Um Yeah, so I've been here two years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is our cellar. Um, so this is our maturation cellar, if you can call it that. So that is the first uh, cement cellar. Uh, what? Cement? Okay. Yes, cement tanks. Um, apparently very old school. You can tell by the, uh, the old school doors. <laughs> There's specific um, varietal that's more dominant? Um, Merlot and Cam. Okay. That's why they're bottling at the moment, because <laughs> their stock is out. Clearly a good product. <laughs> yeah. I really do think it's important to uh, see the inner works of how things are made before you... Uh, let's brighten this up. Before you go and taste it. Oh. Wine time. This is something that we just want to point out that's quite special. It's a okay, Cape Vintage. It's port style. We just can't call it port. Because, yeah. yeah. Legal, yeah, the legal term. Right now in front of me I have the Heritage Food and Wine Pairing. Um, this is going to completely uh, knock me sideways, but I don't have to drive anywhere, so if not, why not? It's supposed to start on the left hand side. We'll give it a... Oh, Shannon, how fruity you are. Cheers. I'm gonna teach you how this is done. So your Shannon goes with your brie and fig. Mm. I say that's rather lovely. Crisp, refreshing, tropical. Mm. Indeed. Next up we have um, a Sauvignon Blanc. So your Sauvignon is to be paired with your uh, green olives. Some Dale Wood Fromage to go with the uh, Pinotage 2017. Mm, good cheese. <laughs> Moving swiftly along. <laughs> Next up is another 2017 number. This is the Shiraz. And this will be paired with some Bultong. Thank you. Interesting. So I will move on to the next one, which is the uh, Lanskruen Blanc de Noir. Almost white pinotage, an off-white pinotage, which is to be paired with the Turkish Delight. Ten out of ten. <laughs> I'm only joking. Let's go. Ciao. Ciao.
Next up on the agenda is the alpaca loom, which is the farm right next door on this side. idea what this is all about um, so we're gonna ask somebody who knows I'm Brandon hi this is Brandon Brandon where are we um, we are currently at the alpaca loom that's been set off the barrel road and um, we are gonna let him feed some alpacas I'm a feed an alpaca what's the difference between an alpaca and a llama okay cool we'll just come closer <laughs> I need to know show you one. here we go we're gonna see the difference right over there is a llama okay now, as you see, they're bigger, they're heavier, they have a more camel looking face, yes. banana twirl ears, and then also, unfortunately, he's not standing up at this moment. Come, boy. Oh, not you guys. <laughs> okay, he's yeah. not getting up, so I can't show you, but his feet is also twice the size of Brown Vado's okay. alpacas. And then we also have two different kinds of alpacas here on the farm. We have a Huakaya alpaca, H U A C A Y A. Yeah. And then we also have a Suri alpaca, like this dude over here. Okay. I'm now, definitely more of one of those. Yeah, they are the wool woolly and fluffy yeah. kind. <laughs> <laughs> As you, what kind am I again? <laughs> you look more like a Suri alpaca. This over here is our, basically our prize animal here. This is Picasso. Just grab a hand. Yeah. Oh, good, good. You do. Yeah. And then feed him. Okay. And as you guys will see, Silver Moon is quite greedy as well. They eat so softly. No danger of the fingers going here. No, you don't actually have to worry about that because they actually have no upper front teeth. Welcome to Sate Achterpaal. <laughs> oh, we so fluffy. Then we also have the obviously the petting zoo over here. Entry is free. Then we have the 20 rand for a bucket of feed and it is open the entire day. We obviously have the weaving studio inside. We shear these guys once a year for their wool, have the wool tested, um, we get the results back, we shuffle through the wool here, we then have it sent to a small mill in Wellington where it gets processed into yarn, okay. which then get loaded onto the looms and in the store we make our ponchos, scarves, shawls and blankets. Shearing time is just ahead of summer, sort of in spring, uh, as the temperatures start to warm up. This is the barn, uh, everybody's out for the day. Look at them run. Oh, come past. Incoming! Oh, pack a wave. In the stillness somewhere above, the city lies... Over here we have Dooley. Um, now a lot of people that come on the barn to always ask how's it going with Dooley because he's had quite a nice history. Now, if you would like to feel his side. Oh my gosh, I thought the previous one was fleecy. Yeah, so he is super soft. Oh, incoming. Okay, so this fashionable dude over here. Yeah. He's called Henry. We have this little dude over here, which a lot of people will know. He's called Milk Stout. <laughs> That's the color. Okay, so I just want to show you quickly in the mouth. If you guys look over here, you'll see no teeth at the top. All underbite. All underbite. Cool. So over here, we have Henry. Over here, we have Cedric. And over here, we have Milk Stout. Perfect trio. These guys are one years old. They are one year old, yeah. So you're supposed to feed them one at a time, just to prevent <laughs> them from uh, spitting at you. You intake. Oh, <laughs> that upper spit. Not at me, at each other. What do you see? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> you will not believe how fleecy this is. You could just, you could just sleep. <laughs> So cool. I do believe that this is probably the best time of the year to be here when they're this fluffy. Hey, I mean, this is as fluffy as they pretty much get, right? Basically, yeah. Awesome! You, you have to come and try this. Bring the family. Uh, family friendly, I'm assuming, hey? Yeah, definitely. That's what the, the feeding area is for. Um, 
I can't say much more, but uh, yeah, definitely come check this out. And that's a nice way to start your day, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm also being told that besides uh, the fun and activities, uh, there, there we go. That's the other reason you should come here, right? <laughs> yep. I was, I, I've heard that this is the best coffee around. This is me walking from one wine farm to another, enjoying the sounds of the birds. I don't remember much from the night before, just from the human touch. Now I want more. My memory slowly coming back. The location I'm on now is a farm called Spice Root. Something about tonight, now it's gonna be your last. And now my mind is a mess, my heart is pounding fast why the place is called Spice Root, but it's got something to do with this little red line that travels from Europe all the way down to the Cape. That's where we stop, that's where we stay, although the red line does continue, obviously, all the way to India. Hint, hint, the Spice Root. Hi, it's Spice Root Tasting Room. So welcome to our destination. There you go, hope you enjoy all the lovely tastings that we have to offer on the farm. So we offer you some beer tasting, proper tasting, gin tasting, and we also have the cured meat tasting and chocolate tasting. There's also sorbet and ice cream tasting. With the wine as well. There you go. Which is the best place to be here. Yeah. Wine tasting. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> we have, we've got seven businesses on the farm. Seven businesses. Awesome. Yes, and each one is in a walking distance from each other. So you can come in your own time, at your own leisure, come and enjoy yourself here yeah, by us. Spice Root. Spice Root is a farm that is a collective of a whole bunch of different businesses. We've got the wine tasting, we've got chocolate tasting, there's gin, there's pizza, there's beer, there's a restaurant here, there's another restaurant there. So we're going to check out everything just now. Uh, as I always do, I think I'm going to start with a wine tasting. <laughs> I'm so predictable, I know. We're going to drink some wine. We're going um, to do in. some lovely spice shoot wines. Okay, there's a little table for me over there where I can be noisy. So we're doing the Swartland. We, which wines would you like to try? So this is. The I'm going to go wine. with your recommendation. All right. The car is parked off for the day. Uh, all I have left to do is chill, drink wine, eat good food, and enjoy the scenery. Here we go again. <laughs> so on the left, you're starting with the spice shit Sauvignon Blanc. On the right hand side, you'll be doing our spice shit Boyne. Cool. Our farm is based in the Marmesbury, um, Swatland, Darling, which is more on the west coast. So we're right on the edge here, right? Yes. Yeah. So it is more or less 30 to 35 kilometers away from the spice shit destination itself. Okay. The vines you see outside, we're not using them for our wines at all. The farm next to us is just called Fairview. Are you familiar with Fairview? Yes, I was there earlier today. Okay, so Fairview uses them for their wines because we and Fairview, we own by one owner. We okay. decided we're not producing the same style of wine. Ah, okay. So with us, why should we make use of unirrigated bush vines? Yeah. Over there, that's an example of a bush vine. Okay. That is what a vine looks like when it's growing wild. Obviously, it's a certain type, um, a wild growing one, but very different to the straight rose and obviously has a very different influence on the taste of wine. So bush vines are very old vines to give you more concentrated juices and flavorful wines. Okay. I like the trellis vines you see outside that's wide up that needs irrigation. The soil and the climate of the side is not suitable for a bush vine to grow in. That is why we make use of the warm climate like the Marmesbury, Swartland, Darling uh -huh. area. That side we only market our wines so we do a whole lot of dry land farming. You get three different styles in the southern quite floral, mm. bit of a guava taste on the palate as well. So this is a 2017 vintage. You know when you watch a movie and you see somebody eating something and then you want to eat something? Well that's my tactic to get you to come here. I'm going to make you watch me drink wine. <laughs> so much so until you go, that's it, I've had enough, I'm buying a ticket, I'm going to the Cape Winelands. Please come join me. 
after all the time that I've spent here, I'm definitely starting to actually taste and understand the difference in wines and make sort of an opinion of what is my preferred. Um, I'm probably a very uh, run-of-the-mill wine drinker. I don't have any special tastes, um, but uh, I do enjoy a wooded Chardonnay, surprisingly. A Chenin, a fruity Chenin and um, nice full-bodied uh, Merlot. Those are my choices. So starting with the wine on your left, the Spanish 2019 Saffron Rosé. So more like a Pinot Noir, beautiful raspberry and cherry rosé also pick up in the wine. Now Terra meaning Earth, the Brun is an old name for Malmesbury. part of the winelands. It's not the wine, it's the lands. It's the where the estates are kept, it's the mountains, it's the landscapes. I, I, I do believe that that is, that is the reason you come here. You can get good drink anywhere in the world, you know, uh, but location, location, location. Just up the stairs from the wine tasting, we have Bali and Biltong, which is a restaurant. Hello! Oh, the light changes. The moment you walk in here, there is the instant smell of like, I, I can't, the only way to describe it is like German's food, like, like pub food, like, like bratwurst and, and mustard and beer. It's, it's got that smell and vibe to it. Very, very pub. Afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to Bali in Bolton. Thank you. My name is Letitia and I will be helping you. We do have a burger special. I'm burger in. and chips. I'll take it. <laughs> I must say I'm the worst. I didn't even listen to the rest of the menu. <laughs> Specials, burger, I'll take it. In something to drink? Um, Seeing I've I love a beer, but I, I've started with wine, so I think I'll stay with wine. Uh, white wine. We do have the Stone Town Sauvignon Blanc. Let's do one of Thank those. Thank you. Great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, sir. I just want to say that I'm having a really great day. Paul is really a place that has something for everyone. If you're a drinker, you're a non-drinker, you're an adventure person, you're a leisure person, you're a family, you're a solo traveler, you're a couple, you name it, they got it. Mm -hmm. Compared to French or Constellenbosch, people always say it's like, it's not as good. What, what's your opinion on that? Can I speak Afrikaans? Natuurlijk, yeah. Um, I shall say, Perl is the as die. Uh, as die ding. Ja. As gevolg van, kom ik zeven meneer. Ja. Ons het een wiel. Ja. Ons het tafelberg. Ja. Ons het liekop. Het is stil. Jy hoor net die, die, die volkjes ja. uit. As jy stad toe gaan, gaan jy die gedreen van karre, van motors, mm -hmm. van vrachtmotors. Ja. Stellenbos is wel die Ja, ik wil het niet. Die toerisme onderdruk of neerzet, yes. maar, maar, maar die perel. Die perel is, is die plek. Al is het net die groenigheid wat ons zien en zo so mooi oor ons kijkt. Ons plek is die beste. Spice Road Destination is wow, die beste plek. <laughs> There you go, you heard it. It's the middle of the week at the moment. It's pretty quiet here. But if you want to come hang out where all the locals hang out, this is the place. I've seen this place on a Saturday afternoon. It is jam-packed. You're not going to get a table. Even the grass here is filled with people um, having drinks, having lunch, enjoying themselves. So this is very much a local spot and uh, it's called Bali and Biltong. <laughs> this is your Perga special. Ah, look at it. It looks good, but uh, <laughs> Bon Louis on day one, that was, the, we claimed that to be the best burger, not just in Paul, but ever. So it was tough to beat. Um, 
we'll see how this one does. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> After having had a couple of bites of this burger here at uh, Biltong and Bali, sorry, I have to, um, I can't take that back because that burger was phenomenal. This burger is pretty damn good too. Some people would say this one's better, that one's not. I can't do that. I have to subcategorize now. Bon Louis had the best gourmet, in other words, elaborate, like special burger ever. This is the best traditional burger. It's just, it's a real pub style burger. Chef did organize you another dish that will be hiken chips. Another one? Yes. Or may I put that one for a takeaway for you? Oh, oh, because we were two people? Yes. As you may have picked up, Darren is not on the shoot today. So today I will be flying solo. Darren is not joining me. But I'm going to make the most of it and uh, see what Saint Achterpal has to offer. And because of this, uh, not everybody knew he wasn't coming. It was a last minute dropout, unfortunately. Um, They've made me a second meal. I can't turn it down. I can't eat it right now. I've got other stuff to go and do. But I will take it with me. And uh, I will have it this evening. I know that they've got a microbrewery. Which has grown into probably what you call a medium brewery. Uh, it's pretty widespread. It's called CBC. Okay, Brewing Company. Uh, they are on the property as well. There is no way and I can actually consume beer on top of the wine that I've had today. So I'm going to have to give that a skip. But if you're into beer instead of wine, there's definitely that on the spot as well. And uh, I'm making my way for the chocolate though. How is your day so far? Oh, oh so fine. <laughs> can we pose? Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm finished <laughs> the day. There's still so much to do. I'm pooped. I made it to the top. Rocky moment. De Villiers chocolate. If I eat any more, I'm going to explode. So I'm going to take a breather and enjoy the view over Spice Root before I go in and gorge myself on chocolate. You don't just do chocolate tasting here, you can also obviously buy in the shop. Hi, I'm Raquel and welcome to the Valier's Chocolate. Which is the most popular in here? Sea salt and caramel. New product, it's called Thins. Be a thin snacking chocolate, just the on-the-go snack. And of course, a chocolate store is never complete without your truffles. They do a full chocolate experience where you can come and do a workshop and learn how to actually make chocolate. That's the workshop area. And then go into the uh, studio and actually see how it goes from a bean into a slab. Sorry, from bean to a bar. I'm just gonna go in, get the short route, grab a few pieces, make you watch me go, mmm. <laughs> I'll skip that for a change. I'm Juliana Kashi. <laughs> so we are at Spice Roots, so this is a chocolate victory. Behind me here is the uh, De Villiers chocolate, chocolate bar as we could call it, where you can do a chocolate tasting for 30 bucks. It's more than you can handle. It's like eating a whole slab of chocolate in one sitting. It's debaucherous, it's terrible, and it's amazing. So this is a cocoa beans, it's already roasted, and we roast it about one hour to two hours. <laughs> the whole thing? Yes. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm so glad we've come so far in technology and science to make that taste like what I'm about to taste now. <laughs> <laughs> the bar goes from darkest to lightest. 
they keep getting sweeter as you go, so it, it's, it wouldn't make sense to go the other way around. Otherwise, everything becomes very bitter. This is the new product they're talking about. New. It's called Thins, for obvious reasons. And this one is my favorite. The biscotti. We're at Spice Room. And how do you guys feel about this place? Ooh. We feel very good. We enjoyed ourselves thus far. What would you, if you had to recommend to people where to go, where would it be? Spice Room, definitely. Yeah, but where on Spice in Spice Room? The wine tasting. Yes. 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 And the food, and the food is very, very nice. We're at? Yes. That's Bali, 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 Bali and Bolt. Yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes. We had burgers there. Yes, it's And it was really, really nice. It, the burgers was I'm good, I'm still good. full now. And if you just want to come and just relax, even if you don't want to eat, even if you don't want to do wine tasting or beer tasting, this is still the place to be. The vibe is just so relaxing. The vibe is cool. It's a nice sunny yes. day. Yes. And what yes, I really like about the place is I, when we entered here, I saw that there is some entertainment for the kids. Landskroen. Spice root. Landskroen. Honestly, I believe the only real danger of walking home at this time of the year are the snakes I'm not paying attention to probably in the vineyards. <laughs> Some people drive, some people walk. You see, that didn't take so long. From Spice Street to Landskruen was just a hop, skip and a jump. And I think uh, the only thing that's missing right now is uh, just before this, while the sun's going down, we've got a view of Table Mountain over there, Simonsburg and Drakenstein Mountains over there, is a, <laughs> a glass of wine. <laughs> myself everything that we could have been I'm gonna go set up on the deck there were owls. There were three owls at the back of this cottage. I just heard them now. So I'm going to take the long lens and I'm going to go and see if I can get a shot of an owl. So the guinea fowls are over there, the chickens are there, and the hardy guys, as you can hear, are up there. The guinea fowls got a fright and one of the owls actually just took off. I can see it on the on the pole above that roof. It's not a great shot, but I'll just get it to show you. You can actually see the owl has a, a mouse in its mouth. I don't want to chase it away, but I want to get closer. Okay, let's go. Let's try this. It's looking at me. I hope the mic's picking that up, but you can hear that one up on the tree there. Clearly making a On 
honestly, as far as owl hunting goes, that was pretty darn successful. Would you believe it? A second owl came in, landed on the same perch, they swapped the mouse over to the other. That was so cool! You watch this series from the beginning till this point and you tell me if we're not having fun, if I'm lying. So please, do me the favor and um, look at the end card now and choose one of the four videos where you can uh, step into the Wineland's blog because there is so much to see. Enjoy. <laughs>